in the cath lab for cases 8, 9, 10, and 11 with subjects CTO, calcific lesions, and radial interventions. Okay. We can... Uh, Are we live? Yeah. We're live and we can see you. Yeah, actually, case number nine uh, has been done earlier, so we are starting with case number 10. If you can see, that's Great. my DI. Yeah, we can right. see, of course. Yes, so it's an 81-year-old male uh, who presented uh, with exertional angina, and he has had prior multiple PCI, so he did have a stress test before coming to the cath lab, which had shown that he had moderate infraposterior scarring as well as uh, ischemia in that uh, territory. He was on good medical therapy with the two medication, could not uh, be on a beta blocker. He had a resting bradycardia with a heart rate in the 50s. So he did have a cath which had shown that his uh, left system was, um, all the strengths were patent. And this is where we are, that he has a CTO, the uh, stent in the mid RCO was patent, but he had this uh, could be floral. long. Put the oh, floral you can on. see it. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. start seeing this CTO. We no. heard about it. We expect it. Yeah. The distal RCA CTO, very challenging. Tell us about it. So, though we mentioned that we'll use a single injection, so we did uh, use a left radial to get a dual injection. So, you do see that um, his PDA, RPL, and AV continuation does fill from the left side. So we do have a six French system actually. We have six. Initially we were thinking maybe we go with seven French um, to use a center cross if we at all we need it. But I think we will start with the six French. Uh, we have AL.75 and start the CTO work. We go with the fielder fine cross and then uh, escalate the wire. Anything from the... Dr. Di Mario, any, uh, any thoughts regarding the setup uh, of the case? Well, I mean, uh, you have seen a radial uh, small catheter on the left. Uh, okay. I mean, I've seen only one view of the collateral, but they look okay. very challenging. And uh, to be honest, uh, it's probably a, a, an integrated approach with very little chance to go retrograde. So I will uh, support uh, the use of a, uh, a second approach that will not give any bleeding. And for the left, uh, you don't really need an extra wire to hold the catheter in place. I think uh, it's easy to go with, uh, with uh, a five French. I tend to use more a guide to have a little bit of more flow. Uh, certainly, again, anterograde. I would personally go for a slightly bigger uh, guiding catheter on, on the uh, occluded vessel because it offers more options if you need it. Having said that, uh, when you choose uh, such a great, uh, uh, probably is an Amplatz uh, left two uh, uh, guiding that a perfect uh, intubation of the, uh, of the vessel, I'm sure that the support she um, uh, enjoys is, is uh, excellent, and I see great progress of the wire already. Yeah, there is a detail there that there is a stent in the distal um, vasculature, so that which doesn't seem to be very short either. So somehow that vessel, once upon a time, was able to be navigated and even deploy a stent out in distal branch of the RCA. So in general, that's somewhat encouraging. Um, although it's a bit far from the uh, Room four. from where uh, the CTO starts. Yeah. Uh, Doug, any any other comment about uh, the? Yeah, the setup? I I think the um, retrograde image. I don't see a lot of good feeling for the PDA. If you right. change the six French guy, which is I think you can see a good feeling, then I can tell how long is the absorption. So actually, you can see the entire, I think it's a more than close to 30 millimeter, uh, if you see here our good, uh, so going back, so if we can see, if we are, quotient for a retrograde axis here is that we do have a stent across the first two septals of the LAD. Right. Yeah, Somehow, and I, yeah. Don't, yeah. I don't see a, go, see that it's a, not an excellent feeling. Yeah, there. this is not a good, no, I don't yeah. see a good so injection there. Mm. Let me show you it's more. Not, it's not <laughs> so great, yeah. Do you, have you, uh, do you have access to the film during the stenting of the RCA to at least uh, yeah, no get a full uh, look at the, how that vessel used to look? Which or one? If it's, 
the, the original stenting of the RCA. So to make sure this uh, vessel is actually straight, looks like it's going to be straight, but at least that's good. Yeah, we have the old film. It looks, uh, it is a straight shot straight. vessel. It's okay. just that uh, the last film was almost four years ago, so we don't know when the, yeah. the, uh, uh, you know, the occlusion happened. So here I am with the fielder fine cross, so I think I'm hitting some resistance here. So I will change to the wire escalation, we will change to the Gaia now. Gaia family is the same thing as a new um, uh, wires where they have a micro cone tip. And then the tip already comes with a pre-made, you know, you have a one millimeter pre-made uh, pre-shaped tip there. And the great yep. thing about this is a uh, 014 wire and then it tapers down to 01. Zero. So it's Plus, it's a, a hydrophilic. Yes. Is it a Gaia second or? This is Gaia three. Gaia three. So, good thing about Gaia is it uh, avoids the hard tissue, deflects, you know, deflects away from the hard tissue, yeah. so that we should be able to advance. Do you usually go to Gaia three right away? Yeah, Gaia three or uh, Miracle Bros, one of the two. And which micro catheter do you have? Uh, I mean, right now we have fine cross. Any particular uh, preference uh, in microcatheter so, selection? So once you know, once the first uh, wire is, which is the soft wire, which is not crossing, mostly, I mean, for me it is Gaia second, which I will take as the first, and then escalate to Gaia's third. Why? Why you? Or the, that? because Gaia second is less traumatic. I mean, it is not so uh, stiff. Already weak. crossed. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see. Looks like making some success with a Gaia, Gaia 3. Um, we don't see very well. Now we need that that, that PDA stand may actually help us. Um, I think it's somewhere there. If we can get into yeah. the stand, we're yeah. golden. Yeah. And it looks That's like it. we are. Can you do some injection? OK, hold on. Well. This is a radial uh, system here. OK, you have some dye? I think we already know it is nicely through the stand, so it looks yeah. like it's great. You see some? Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, oh, no, no, low mic, low One mic. thing the stand does, the distal stand. Yeah, looks yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful cross. Perfect. Yeah. It's a beautiful, and actually, and actually we, we know that it was intraluminal because it went first in the AV continuation, then took it back, then went to the RC, to the PDA, and you know, verification was through the stand, and now with the uh, extra verification through the contralateral injection. So I just try to advance the microcatheter across. Same if it does not grow, you'll just do your corkscrew movements. See that? Just like uh, you will do. A little resistance there. But yeah. Let us the 300 run through ready. Yeah. You have it? Yeah. Good run through. I think it advances a little bit. I can't see from yeah, the Yeah, yeah, I can. We can, yeah, we can see that. It may be at the crux, we may have some difficulty. So maybe the microcatheter, if we choose a little bit low profile before, easier to cross, or we can have a Corsair or turnpike in the beginning? Yes. Well, she has six French, I think, a Corsair. Of course, it fits, but you don't see that much. Maybe a Caravel can, can be an alternative choice, or a Turnpike LP that fits very well in a six. Yeah. I agree, Caravel probably would have been a better, a better choice here. Okay, now I think it has it's gone. Crossed, more or less. Is it? Almost. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes. 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 Careful the guide. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. We have gone into the PDA now. Mm. Okay, get us a 300 wire. You like to 300 Y, you don't like the sort Y and chop it out? We could, I mean, if this uh, fine cross had not crossed, then we would go with the 2.5 balloon and uh, wire trap it and take it out. I think right now we have crossed 300 wire, you know the curve? I think you're just into the PDA, so. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but I think that the, there is no lesion there, so I think this should be okay. I like aspirating whether there is blood. You are already a confirmation you are mm. across. Mm. 
I think we're just across, uh, yeah. just, uh, just across enough. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's and point. you know, whenever there's an occlusion that is uh, long, you have also enhanced friction through the occlusion for the cat. So although it's crossing, there's also more resistance to uh, get across with longer length. Okay, so that's, a, that's actually a, a very good. So I think uh, what we'll do technique. now, since the fine cross has crossed, we already have balloon. We have uh, two, five, 15 balloons. We'll just pre-dilate. There's no calcium that we see. So just pre-dilation and uh, strengthening of this RCA, right? Sounds good. You want to go with what size? Two five thirty or two five twenty or? Oh, well, or we two have or a thirty or what? Yeah. How you want to start? No, we're going to. We have a two or twelve balloon here. Two or twelve. <laughs> we could actually go with the two five, I guess. Oh, I think two is good. Well, you know, I mean, it's a long occlusion. Since it is distal, before. if it was prox or mid, we would have gone with the two five. Once you know you have a microcatheter that has crossed the CTO, you could go with the two five. 12 to 15 balloons to pre-dilate. Now the question would have, would have been same. Suppose the microcatheter had not crossed the CTO, you will wire trap it, take it out, and then uh, you decide that's the time whether you will go with the balloon. Just uh, then you have to go with the smaller balloons, which would be your 1.2, uh, 1.2 balloons. There is a, almost a 1.0 balloon, which is a sapphire balloon. So you go with the small balloons. If the small balloons also don't cross, this, this usually happens in the case when there is calcific lesion. That's the time you would consider, since you already have the O14 wire, that you want to do a laser at, in, a, in a CTO. That's pro, uh, we, in this situation, yes, you could do it, since we know the crossing was uh, straightforward, and we are 100% uh, sure that we did, did not have any subintimal uh, channel. That's true. If there is any doubt that you were subintimal and you did re-entry, do not do the laser. That's a good point, but uh, and that could have been a, a good case. Particularly, the laser works very well when you when you cannot think there is a, a focal area not super long that uh, has a resistance, and you're going to blow up that area essentially and go forward in a in a non non -up non-FDA approved use of the laser, of course. It's a conjunction of laser plus contrast, where otherwise you, you avoid the contrast. Now you see here I'm having trouble, but that should be okay. And this is the time you make a decision whether you want to dilate here, keep yeah, going why, forward, yeah, or not? you want to consider taking a Godzilla or a Guideliner. Mm, it's going. Go up. It's going. It's going. I mean, dilate and go yeah, forward. Yeah. yeah, go up. Probably one five balloon will eventually work uh, across the data. It's going Okay, down. Origin. I think we're, clear, we're clearly inside the proximal cap, beyond the proximal cap, so it should be, um, you know, by dilating, uh, you break down. up the cap, and, you know, that increases the chances. If we hadn't even entered the cap, that would have been a different story. I noticed no. she didn't use a trapping that is, uh, you know, she likes these long wires, but of course, uh, maybe trapping is the way most people would prefer nowadays. In fact, uh, I mean, also, she's very confident with using these aggressive amplats. I would personally use a normal Judkins with a trap liner and gives you the confidence that you can put the guide extension yeah, inside and a uh, similar support and also true. use it for trapping. That's good, just inflate here, yeah. I mean, every time it goes a little bit further, so it's a good sign. Well, you need five or six inflations, well, so be it. So Sunil, so far, what did radial approach has given oh, us perfect. here? I mean, could have given us that we don't Go have down. here, or you know, are we down. maybe into a situation that the support was superior to a radial for this case? We really haven't used a contralateral anyhow. Yeah, I mean, Go. we do a lot of our CTOs by radial, but I think the, um, the really complex CTOs where you really need a lot of room, I think it's pretty challenging to do, um, have two radial guides for those. Oftentimes we'll do one radial and one uh, femoral. Oh, down. Um, you may have to use a cutting balloon. I don't know what you think, but two sometimes five, right? for some patients, two radials two is five? just not that well tolerated for, for a long procedure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I think so. that's, um, there are ways around that. Ready? I think you have adequate sedation, patients do fine. Um, well, yeah, that takes care of most Go. problems, of course. Okay, good. 
was good. You don't want to go in two, five, thirty balloon before you go any. No, no, we are we are going to. No, more important, we may have to do a Wolverine of that uh, ISR of that, uh, you know, the uh, PDA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, looks kind of good already. Mm -hmm. There's an, edge there's an edge lesion there. It's not really inside that lesion. So I think we will re-stent that and we will take a longer stent, PDA. Oof. Would you consider using IVUS here? Okay. Well, I think okay. it's going to probably look fine with a little yeah. massage there. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> IVUS to get the lesion length? No, well, I, I mean, we, we should do all CT. long CTOs, we, we like to use IVUS just to... We should do all CT so we can use the app a little bit in this case. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't know the actual vessel size for the long-standing uh, long CTO. Okay, now you get us a 3030 balloon, right? That's what you want us to use, George, 3030 balloon for the distal RCA? I'll probably go to 27530. It's a little bit too, uh, I think. <laughs> Let's not go 30 yet. You just were a 2 I think. So don't jump from 2 to 3. Anyhow, probably we're going to use a 3 or stand. So. Yes. Down. Uh, when are you going to protect the PLV branch? 3 0. What? RPL? The I think I, uh, let's see uh, the That's stenting strategy. I think we can give a gap there, right? We will take care of the PDA. We'll put one long stent in the PDA. And when we are stenting, we'll just uh, come up to the bifurcation. Let's pre-dilate the distal RCA first no, no, and debating see. debating the PDA stent. Let's see how it goes after the dilation of the distal RCA. Dr. Hirmath, any ideas? Yeah, I think uh, so many times the vessel, which is chronically occluded, it looks small on angiogram. So I would imagine IVUS is a very strong suggestion to pick up the correct diameter for the vessel. Yeah, I think IVUS is going to help because it's going to make us okay. use a lot of nitro. Okay, get the so IVUS. Then that's going to increase the vessel size. So, so you want me to pre-dilate first or do the IVUS? No, pre-dilate. Pre-dilate and uh, start using nitro. Start working on that. Okay, get to us a 2520 quickly. <laughs> Dr. Cut Patel, now. any comment thus far in the way they go, the case goes? And uh, would well, you think the uh, imaging uh, adjunct would have a role? Uh, I think uh, image is very good because of the reason they, uh, they just comment about the sizing of a chronic occlusion. And uh, I would just uh, consider not treating the distal PDA because of a uh, small vessel and they make Obvious. it. Yeah, and the focal lesion in the end. So actually, if anything, the, the stent's kind of uh, working okay in this patient. It's the area that was not stented that went down and causes chronic total occlusion. Balloon, 2520 balloon. What is general choice if uh, this Gaia 3 had not crossed? Uh, we so if Gaia 3 had not crossed, I think I would have gone to Confienza. Like I mentioned, the first uh, wire that you want to use for penetration would be Gaia or Miracle. So Gaia 3 equal to Miracle, uh, almost Miracle 3 with the re regards to the tip load. Um, then you don't want to go to, you know, if you want, you can try Miracle 6, but I think then we would have gone to Confienza, which would have been a 9. 12. 12. And, you know, we do carry the progress uh, family uh, of wires, which were actually the wires that were tested during the expert CTO trial, um, which they, they actually are hybrid wires that I would say. These wires are polymer coated wires, which have, uh, you know, the tip that is uh, hydrophobic as well as they, have, they go up to 14. The tip load can go up to 14 and they're tapered. I think that and if these, in, uh, these wires don't work, then of course we have the super stiff uh, Astrato wires, which are a 20 gram tip as well as a 30 gram and as well as 40 gram tip. Astato. Astatos. They're ready with IVAS. I mean, well, let me just pre-dilate the uh, distal. So I think that, that would be the, unless uh, Ka, Carlo, if, uh, how would you wire escalate in uh, the CTOs? Well, I confess I tend to do one step uh, more, just going with a, a softer uh, Gaia. 
uh, occasionally a one if, or, or a two if I don't see calcium oh. especially. I uh, follow uh, what is my feedback uh, with, with the normal wire. If the normal wire penetrates somehow, I tend to go for a relatively soft Gaia rather than the third. That, having said that, you know, I think that the Gaia family overall is quite safe. It's very unlikely that uh, if you move it uh, gently, if you pull it back uh, once you see that uh, the tip uh, um, Bains, uh, you, you go subintimal. Okay, so um, I see you have a guideline or a Godzilla that are available. No, I to have it. Put in. Yeah, if we needed uh, for the stand delivery, we just had it in charge. Now we got, the IVAS is ready here. Well, let's do, just do the IVAS and see what's your uh, vessel size, and then we just go ahead and stand it. Why don't we take okay. a picture of the night, or okay, we may yeah. save the IVAS for the end? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Final yeah. IVAS. Now we have it here ready, so that. Okay, ready? We're giving some nitro and then uh, taking a picture. Yeah, good idea. Yes, yeah, good. Good, okay, go. Go, go, that's good. Mm -hmm. I think it will be at 3.0 to 3.5. Yeah. It's going to be big. Okay. Yeah, the IVAS ready? Yeah, it's very long, that's for sure. <laughs> Your guess is a three to five? Yeah, yeah. You three may five. have to bridge the old stand and go all the way there. That's another yeah, story. Yeah, I think uh, that's, uh, no, that's what I meant. We put a short stand, I mean, I don't know, short stand. What length was that? Two, five, 38 in there and another three or 38 in the front. Give me, give me. IVAS is working? Okay, we are going up with the IVAS. Okay, here. And of course, we may end up having this, uh, when I'm turning this CTO into a little bit of a bifurcation because we're gonna have to deal and decide what are we, what are we gonna do with the uh, AV continuation, which is a large branch, 90, 90 degree takeoff, no disease at the ostium and uh, Looks like now we may have to stand across it. Dr. Mehta, any ideas? Well, I, I can give you a little uh, historical perspective to it. Uh, I think uh, in the 108 odd CCC live cases, we've had about uh, 35 CTOs. And uh, uh, almost, I think, uh, there was one failure, everything else was. But uh, the more relevant uh, strategy, which Anu, I think, uh, kind of uh, mentioned, is that somewhere around a year ago, we moved into the strategy of uh, using the Gaia earlier. And that, I think, has made a big difference. Mm. And uh, to me, the real take-home message for people would be that in their wire escalation strategy, where... The initial, our, our strategy used to be more of a miracle and then a confianza. I think moving a little earlier into the Gaia looks to be very promising, but. Okay, stop there. Where are okay, we now? Uh, so, so, no, no, stop means, no, no, uh, bookmark. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I just needed a, okay. Give us the record again. Okay, after the end. Bookmark and give us a vessel size here, okay? All right, and uh, following this, Ivus, you're going to tell us your stand choices, and uh, uh, right at, after that, we're going to cut the loop diameter to... here. I think at least a 3.5. 3.5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, uh, I want to go long, 3.5 in the distal vessel, and uh, we're going to go to room two right now and come back later to see the final result. Yes, go to Great. room four. <laughs>